That's Courtney Clenny, an OnlyFans model who made millions with um, the videos that she put on her OnlyFans page. You know, people would pay a monthly subscription, she would get the money, and then she would do things on camera that you can't do on Instagram, uh, but made a lot of money. And, you know, you're allowed to make money in this world. Uh, but now she's charged with murdering her boyfriend, Christian Obenselli, and she is locked up in Miami. Her parents are from Texas. Uh, they got in trouble as well because apparently the victim's computer, according to prosecutors, was broken into um, by the parents with the help of their daughter. And somehow the lawyers were in the middle of it. I don't understand all of that. Um, but they're in a little bit of trouble. But the parents, Kim and Deborah Clenny, also sat down, uh, I believe, for an interview with TMZ. Take a listen. I do think it may have been mutually physical, but you have to remember that he weighed, what, 220? 230 pounds. 230 pounds, and she weighed 150. Did she ever tell you she feared he would kill her? Yes, he almost did. A couple weeks before that, she said that she was passing out. He was strangling her, and she said that it was going through her mind, oh my gosh, my mom's going to have to play my funeral. So that's the defense, and we've heard that from the beginning. Uh, that's a defense, but we've also from the beginning been looking at this elevator video where it looks like Courtney Clenny is the aggressor. Punching Christian, pulling his hair, going after him, screaming at him. But Courtney Clenny, her parents, have a different version of what's happening in this elevator video. Here's what they, they told TMZ. That elevator went directly to her landing to go into her apartment. She had a $12,000 a month apartment where the, the elevator goes straight to hers, right? And you can see how desperate she is for him not to follow her. She's trying to push him off the elevator because she doesn't want him to come in. And you can see he's like a rock. Her trying to push him out and she can't push him out. And I think the people uh, shown that video do tend to cut out the part where he has her in a headlock. Okay. Now, who's the aggressor? Who's the victim? And is this going to be a viable defense in front of the jury? That she's in fear of her life. Let's bring back in our think tank. Ed Bremner, Dave Ehrenberg, Judge Gail Byer still with us. Judge, uh, your thoughts on what is going to be the defense take on that elevator video and, and the nature of this relationship. Well, Vinny, here's what I think. I think the mom was probably parroting maybe something she's heard by way of strategy from the defense attorneys, right? It, especially since she and her husband now need their own. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, you're gonna have to really sell a story to a jury not to believe their lying eyes. If the idea is that this elevator encounter that takes place starts with her holding the elevator door, waiting until he gets on the elevator, not pushing him off or keeping him off of the elevator, but the aggression starts only after they're both on and the door is closed, it's a pretty hard sell that she's desperately trying to get him off of the elevator. This isn't mutual combat where they're both fighting. It at least looks like he's trying hard to restrain her from hitting him. And that's gonna be a really tough hill to climb for the defense. So I can see why mom would say that, but I don't think she fully appreciates the really difficult task the defense has in defending that. See, now they're gonna get mad at us because I think we cut it off right before the headlock, Dave Ehrenberg. But it's just no, has they, nothing to do with cutting it. it off. Oh, we did show it. Okay. I was looking for this headlock. Okay. So um, I want to play for you something else, uh, Dave, here. I think that's significant because this is um, Courtney Clenny. This is before the stabbing, right? Before Krishna Omiseli is dead. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of problems that these two were having in the building and neighbors were complaining, et cetera. Here's one of those times where you have officers 
responding. She's in the lobby with them. And here's what she is asking for from the officers. All right, so what do you, what do you, what do you want to say? Okay. I, I just, I want, I want to be like, I want to be like exonerated, I guess, of like anything wrong. And, uh, and I want him, okay, the police are here. I want a restraining order against Christian and Kelly. All right, Dave, does that, is that powerful for the defense? Is that the cornerstone of the defense? Because this is just before all this is happening. Yeah, it, it helps her. It actually is the first time I've seen a video that could perhaps helps her where the, all the other ones seem to hurt her, where you see other instances where she is the aggressor and he is much more of a pacifist. So I think maybe this is the first time I've seen it, but of course it's what she says. These are self-serving comments. And in the end, her whole case is self-serving because there are only two people there the night of the murder and one of them is dead. And, you know, with her parents, yeah, they're being charged, too, so I don't give them too much credibility. And as the judge says, essentially, the the uh, parents and the defense lawyers, whole defense is, who are you going to believe, me or your lion eyes? And Bremner, do, do, do you think the defense is going to need more? Will they need more? Will they need, because uh, I don't know what other videos, text messages, audio, I don't know what else is out there. Um, do you think they need more than her asking for a restraining order on camera with police officers uh, and then perhaps her testimony? Because self-defense cases, usually you got to testify. Yeah, I, 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 Danny, I really think they do need more. But, you know, in self-defense cases, usually the state has to prove the absence of self-defense beyond a reasonable doubt. I think that's the case in Florida. And that's hard to prove a negative. And but then again, as the first aggressor that we see here in the elevator, video, she doesn't have a right to resort to self-defense if she's the first aggressor. But finally, with kind of the battered women syndrome, which is an imperfect self-defense, if I were defending her, that's what I would use. I mean, something that's just kind of build up and build up and build up until, you know, this horrible thing happened. Um, the restraining order helps her, but I still think they need more. I just said first, this right now that we're looking at, it's just kind of overwhelming. Yeah. And what's interesting, before she punches Christian Obenselli, she's punching the elevator. And, and yeah. I, I think like you need the, the, the key fob or something to make it work and she doesn't have it. I think, oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on. I, and I think there, I mean, there's clear evidence that there's drugs in their lives. We know that from everything that we've seen and heard. So I don't know what exactly is going on here. If this is a fit of jealous rage, if it's fear or if it's something else, but um, you know, these two are, are toxic toxic and, mm -hmm. and it ended up very deadly.